Welcome to our introduction taster lesson for the OCR Cambridge Technicals in Information Technology. This is a level 3 course. First of all, let's have a look at the structure of the course. You have to complete 5 units for this course. The units which are underlined are the core units and you need to complete these units to pass the course. There are two exams, both of these are compulsory. The first unit is the fundamentals of IT and the second unit is global information systems. We'll complete unit 1 in year 12 and unit 2 in year 13. We'll then start with three coursework units which will be done throughout the two years. Application design which is a core unit and then two other units. These will probably be web design and prototyping and game design and prototyping. Because this is a Cambridge Technical Qualification, the grading is slightly different. It's graded with a Pass, Merit, Distinction and Distinction Star. A Distinction Star is the equivalent to an A Star at A Level. A Distinction is the equivalent to an A at A Level. A Merit is the equivalent to a C at A Level. And you can see the B and the D sit slightly in between these. There is a chance, if you're interested in any of these other topics, that you might have the chance to be able to study them. They include project development, mobile technology, social media and digital marketing, software engineering for business, the internet over everything, and big, big data analytics. In unit one, you'll study a series of different topics. These include hardware. In hardware, you'll look at storage, inputs and outputs, and communication devices. We'll look at the components inside the computer, which include the CPU, the motherboard, memory and expansion ports. We'll look at different types of computer systems and how they're connected together. We'll look at networking, including troubleshooting, virtual networks, hardware needed for networking, the protocols that are used for computers to be able to speak to each other, the characteristics of different networks and servers. We'll also look at software thinking about operating systems and different types of software. We're now going to have a think about unit one and look at binary. Now everything in a computer is represented with either a zero or a one. This represents an on or an off. A computer can actually only store data using binary. This is because it's built using electricity and that can either be an on or an off. And computers uses, use hundreds of switches which can be in these two states. Everything from images to sound needs to be stored in one of these two states. That means a computer can't actually count like we do. So a computer counts using a binary pattern. Let's explore this pattern. As we've said already, we can only represent data in two states, a zero or a one. These are binary digits and a series of these can make up a command or a number. When we start putting them together, you'll see we have more options. When we have a zero or one, we can only represent two numbers. So if we were counting the numbers, we could only have a zero and a one. If we were to have two binary digits together, we could actually represent four options. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. When we increase that to three binary digits, you can see we start to get more options. So the binary sequence helps us to actually count in binary. We have the maths is shown on the board, but that's not really that important. We have base two, two, because there's two options, a zero and one, and the number of these binary digits we have. So if we have three binary digits, like the options you can see on the screen, we could make eight different numbers. Notice how it starts at zero and not one. So that means even though it finishes at seven, we have eight different options. If we wanted to make the number eight though, we'd have to add another binary digit. Let's have a look at how these work. In class, we're going to be trying learning how to use binary with a series of lights. But if you're at home, you can use this game. See if you can make numbers using the lights. I want you to test your skills now in the binary game. Use this link 
and try seeing if you can remember how to figure out binary. As part of Unit 1, you're going to need to know the different components inside the computer. We're going to open a computer up and have a look and see what it looks like inside. Now, Unit 2 is all about data and storage. This is massive in the industry at the moment, looking at big data and how data can be used for advertising, how it can be used for people's trends and to personalise somebody's experience. This is using something called big data. And we look at information storage, styles of information, the legislation that fits with it and data flow. The other core unit that you're going to have to complete is mobile app development. We're going to be using something called Thunkable. We're now going to complete a tutorial about Thunkable and we're going to be looking at how artificial intelligence can recognise an object and how we can link this and create an application to do this. For the games design unit, we're actually only making a prototype. You're not going to be making a full game, only the prototype for it. We're going to be using a piece of software called Construx to make this. If you've Game Maker before, it's quite similar, but it's much more advanced than Game Maker. For the website design unit of work, you'd be using Wix or a similar piece of software. Now we don't learn HTML directly because we're only creating a prototype of a website for a client. And the idea is that nowadays, unless you are building a very specific website, you're going to use a tool that's already out there that you can use, such as Wix.